12, 7 and 9. It says, And lest I shall be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my grace is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in asceticism, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So, he labours in prayer three times to get this problem away. And it crucifying him. But it's keeping him humble. But what do we learn about that prayer? Well, the Lord says he hates pride. It's one of the things that God says mm. he hates. And Paul is glad, really, that this thorn in the flesh is keeping him under, keeping mm. him humble, because he had this special revelation from God. He could have been very proud. Mm. You know, I'm special to God. I've had this great revelation. But instead of that, he, he was glad that... He was struggling to keep humble. Mm. So. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. So the thorn in the flesh, whatever it was, was keeping him under. Mm. And Paul was struggling against it. But the Lord promises him that my grace is sufficient. And in your weakness... Mm. My grace is there. So I think what we can learn from this, there can be prayers that we can have. Paul had a prayer to get rid of a problem. But that problem, if it had been answered, would have kept him proud. And God hates pride. So he prayed and prayed to get rid of this problem. But this problem would have fed his pride. So God doesn't answer the prayer the way Paul wants. The problem wouldn't have fed his pride, would it? It was the revelation that would have fed his pride. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Thanks for the correction. Yeah, sorry, it wasn't the problem. It was the revelation. He had these great revelations, but he, they, God allowed a problem in his life. So, sorry, thank you for the correction there. So, he had these great revelations, and yet God allowed this problem in his life. And he's trying to get rid of this problem. He's praying and yet God allows it to keep him humble. So we learn that God doesn't answer prayer sometimes the way we want. Sometimes he answers prayer so that it keeps us humble and it works in our sanctification in the way in God changing our lives. So we learn a lesson in prayer there. Um, 2 Corinthians 13, 7 and 9. It says, Now I pray to God that you do no evil, that we should appear approved, but that you should do that which is honest, though we appear as discredited. We can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak, you are strong, and this also we wish, even your perfection. So, any thoughts? Well, he's praying that they may be holy, isn't he? That they may do no evil thing. He's praying that the works may live up to the what they talk about, what they speak. Yeah, yeah. He's it praying is. for holiness, isn't he? Mm. He's praying that God would manifest his holiness in their lives. Uh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 18.
Galatians 6 verse 18. So it says, Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. So again, grace, the grace of God needs to cover people in forgiveness. And it's a very important prayer that Paul constantly prays in verse 18. Galatians 6 verse 18. And let's go to Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 21. So if anybody's joining us, we're looking at Paul's prayers today, expounding uh, Ephesians 1 verse 16. And we're looking at many prayers of Paul through, through uh, the Bible. So in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 21. It says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit into the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you be rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all ages world without end amen any thoughts well in verse 14 he talks about that we would be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine that he's praying that we stand firm on the word. In what verse, sorry? Verse 14. For this cause I bow my... Ephesians 3, 14. Yeah. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in, I'm in chapter 4. <laughs> Ephesians 3. <laughs> Ephesians 3. We're in Ephesians 3. I've got it. <laughs> All right. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In whom, chapter, uh, verse 12, in whom we have boldness and, and access with confidence by faith in him. Our faith gives us boldness. But it... It's like a, a crescendo though, it's so full isn't it? Mm. Verse 16, that you will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might. So there's these riches of his glory that people can be strengthened by and we're to pray mm. that God would strengthen people with these riches. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith that you be rooted and grounded in love. Mm. So there's all these things that we need to be praying for each other that we be rooted in the in the riches of Christ, grounded in his love. And then he says, verse 18, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ. So he's saying that, that there's the riches of knowing God through Christ that the saints know and he wants us to know what the saints know. Well, I, I find it incredible that this prayer because it's a prayer that we don't hear much about, isn't it? And it's a prayer that we're to pray for one another that there are these riches in Christ. Uh, any other thoughts on that before we go on? That we may be rooted and grounded in love. And that's very important that we be rooted and grounded in love. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 talks about love, doesn't it? Mm. And then it says, The Lord washed the disciples' feet, and he said, Love one another as I have loved you. And by implication, it would suggest that <clears throat> if we're not rooted and grounded in love, um, mm. we lose these blessings. Christ won't dwell in our hearts. 
And we won't be able to comprehend the breadth and length and depth and height if we're not grounded in, rooted in this love. Hmm. Yeah, the implication is if we're not grounded in his, in his love, we've not received the riches of Christ. So the question is, have we, have we received the riches of Christ and are we grounded in his love? Are we living a life of love? Or are we missing out? But if we're not living a life of love, if, if we're not living that life of love, we've not received the riches of Christ. That's the implication of the prayer. So... We need to have a tender, gentle, loving heart to one another. Are we forgiving to one another? Are we gracious with one another? Are we gentle with one another? Are we patient with one another? If we are, then it suggests, as it says, we're grounded in Christ. Um, Ephesians 6 verse 19 and 20. Ephesians 6, verse 19 and 20. So do you want to, we've been going for uh, half an hour. Do you want a break? Till next week. Till next week, yeah. Mm. And then, do you want to follow, finish off the prayers of Paul? Mm. Mm. So we're only on verse 16 of Ephesians. Mm. Mm. But it's good even though it's in depth, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. so I'll conclude after this, this mm. verse, yeah. So Ephesians 6, verse 19 and 20. It says, As f And for me, that the utterance, uh, sorry, verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereon with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel which I am an ambassador in bonds that this may this that I, that in this I may speak boldly as I ought to speak so any thoughts there this is the last verse we're looking at tonight then we're going to go back to chapter one in a minute and round off so any thoughts what does it mean praying in the spirit praying in the spirit well I think If you go back to chapter 1 of Ephesians and verse 13, chapter 1 verse 13, it says, In whom you are trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also you have believed that you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So if you remember that in John uh, chapter 3, chapter 3 I think it is where Nicodemus comes to Jesus the Lord says flesh gives birth to flesh spirit gives birth to spirit and then he says you must be born again so born again the Greek word means born from above it means the spirit of God comes in your heart and you become a child of God by his spirit so when it says here praying in the spirit uh, you're dwelling in the in the spiritual in the in the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. You're not depending on the flesh, but you're resting in the Holy Spirit. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you in prayer. And um, basically, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like a child on a summer day, and uh, someone throws a a bath of water over that child. And he's saturated. So basically, when we're praying, we need to saturate our hearts, our minds, our lives in the Holy Spirit. You know. We're not to depend on the flesh. We're, we're, spirit, we're, we're, we're new covenant people. We're covenant people where we're born of the Spirit. So, p 
praying, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So it implies that we're, we have a, a presence of the spirit of God within us and we're to operate on that level. If, a good chapter to read is again is Romans 8 because a lot about the Holy Spirit there and how we're children of God in the Holy Spirit. So he's saying it's praying always, praying in the Spirit, and we're to persevere in prayer. And again, we're to pray that people would have boldness in mission. So if we go back to Ephesians chapter 1, and we've looked at, last week, we looked at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. We expanded that passage. But we've only looked at two verses today and we'll look at the rest of the chapter next week. Uh, sorry, no, we'll, we'll, next week we'll finish off the prayers of Paul, which will only lead us to expound verse 16. So we've looked at, Wherefore I also have heard of your faith. We've looked at what faith is. Faith is from God to trust in the Lord, to be faithful and rest in the Lord. We've looked at the word saints, which means that we're not individualist. When we become Christians, we're part of a community. We should live and strive and desire to love that community, protect that community, and help that community. And then it says, verse 16, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And what we've done there is we've just looked at a collection of Paul's prayers and just seen what Paul was like as a prayer, as a person of prayer. And that's what we're going to do next week. We're going to finish off Paul's prayers. And that's expanded in verse 16. And then we'll finish, we'll, we'll go on to verse 17 to 23. We'll finish that chapter uh, this third week. So so any any final thoughts on, on what we've looked at in the prayers of Paul? He never prays for himself, does he? It's all prayers for... The converts and the saints. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. He doesn't. He doesn't pray for anything for himself, no. does he? No. He prays for a safe passage. He pray. He, he only. Asks them to pray for he a safe only passage. prays so that he can do the Lord's work, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Well, he prayed for the thorn to leave him. Yes. He did, yeah. But I, I, would, I would suggest maybe, like, in, in the context that you're saying, he prayed only then so he could do the work of the Lord, mm. that there was something bothering him, mm. Mm. and he wanted removing because he thought it would help him yeah. in the ministry. Yeah. But God saw it best that it'd give him wonderful revelation mm. and maybe wonderful blessing, mm. And God thought that, no, I'm not going to take it away, the mm. problem. But Paul prayed for converts. He thanked them for the gifts of the Spirit that they had. He thanked them for the holiness that there was in their life. He, he prayed. He thanked them for the gifts that they were giving each other, financial um, he prayed for a safe passage, but you don't hear him praying for so far um, his own needs, his own practical needs, really. And I think there are verses where he needs practical financial needs, but you don't hear him moaning, groaning, do you? It's all mm. for the glory of God, isn't it? Mm. Uh, any other thoughts before we finish? There, there are one or two thoughts that... We, um, I think another thing that we can think about is his, his, his ministry and life was saturated in prayer, wasn't it? Mm. It, it was a life saturated in prayer. Mm. So... He was constantly in prayer, wasn't he? Mm. 
He was constantly in prayer. Mm -hmm. He was constantly depending on God. He was constantly praying for the church, constantly praying for the gospel. Um, anything else? Another one is is the tremendous um, riches that were available mm -hmm. to God's people mm -hmm. that he claimed in prayer. Mm. You know, it, it's not like stoical prayer where it's like, oh, well, please help us. He, he, he seemed to go into these heights of prayer where... Uh, the power of God and the riches of God were available to his people. Mm. He, he wasn't defeatist. And, ex, and he expected God to be working. Mm. They were victorious prayers. It, it was victorious prayers, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, victory in giving the Spirit. Victory in giving gifts. Victory in giving gifts practically. Victory in helping people to be holy. Victory in helping him to go to places to preach the gospel. There was no prayer where he was like depressed or downhearted. Uh, apart from maybe when he prayed about the thorn in his flesh. But even then, um, it was a prayer where he learned, he had to learn uh, submission to God's will there, didn't he? Uh, and it turned out for his blessing. One final thought. We'll finish now. And one final thought. I'll give you one final thought and I'll have one final thought. So if you've got one final thought, you must have one final thought. What has God spoke to you about today? Has anything like come to you tonight? Anything that's spoken to you tonight? One that we've got to be rooted in love, otherwise we won't get any blessing. And he prayed for people that he hadn't seen for quite a while, but he was still, they still meant such a lot to him that mm. he, he was constant in prayer, as you say. I think what I get out of this is, is Paul's living, breathing relationship with God, that it mm. was constantly mm. vibrant, constantly close, effective mm. it was powerful and it was advancing it was triumphant and he's in prison mm. Paul was in prison in Ephesians 1 mm. verse 1 at uh, verse 15 verse 16 he was in prison so he was praying powerfully there some of his most powerful prayers were in Ephesians the book of mm. Ephesians but nothing seemed to daunt him. Nothing seemed to stop him. He was living in this vibrant relationship with God in prayer. And maybe that's the challenge for us today. Is we we need to move deeper into God. And avail ourselves of these riches. And uh, seek this power. And seek to move as Paul has moved. Because all that he had. The riches of God's grace is available to us today. So I'm going to close in prayer. So what we're going to do next week on Thursday, we're going to continue the Ephesians 1.16. We're going to continue to look at the final prayers of Paul and his prayer life. Okay. And uh, I'll be preaching on a Saturday. I'll be looking at um, the book of James on Saturday in the morning. So look out for that if you can't be here at the fellowship it'll be uploaded sometime at the weekend for you to study the scriptures so you can get into ephesians as well okay i'm going to close in prayer i hope this has been a blessing to you hope it's been encouragement to you let's get into the word of god in these coming weeks okay let's pray father god we come to you today and we're amazed that paul's prayers it astounded lord by the riches of your grace. But Father we've been living as paupers. We've been living as weaklings. 
And Lord, we've been living selfish where we've been praying a lot of selfish prayers. And we need to pray for your glory. We need to pray for the advancement of your gospel. And we need to pray more for your people. So Lord, forgive us of our sin. Forgive us of our foolish way. Forgive us of our wicked hearts. May this Bible study go deep into our hearts. And bless us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless all the people that have heard this Bible study. Bless each one of um, uh, us here today. And bless uh, the whole of your people who hear this Bible study. May it enrich them, may it encourage them, may it strengthen them. And bless us all, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.